Hello, everybody. Welcome to our final show for Wild and Out, covering the finals for the Wild series, as well as interviewing the players of our championship winners. Um, so, uh, I'm here joined with uh, Fish and Diamond as our uh, interviewers. So, um, Fish, how you been doing? I I have been doing well. Um, you know, we had a great season of Wild. We had a uh... A lot of interest, a lot of uh, really interesting results, and we have our champions. Um, so I am excited to to go over it. Um, I I might do a slight. I guess I might do a slight rundown of the playoffs since we haven't had a show for a while. So um, and and then you know we'll we'll give our champions the shine that they have earned. <clears throat> sure, for sure. Um, Diamond, how about you? Yeah, honestly, don't know much about Wild this season. I think this is the first time I've unmuted Wild series in, like, two seasons, because I just don't follow the series at all, but it was mm -hmm. kind of interesting to follow it this season, and I'm excited to interview the winners. Yep, for sure. Definitely been an uh, interesting season um, of Wild, so, um, yeah, uh, I guess uh, with that, we can go ahead and um, cover the uh, the playoffs, Fish, if you'd like to lead us in that. Yeah, all right, so... um. I don't exactly have a bracket up in front of me, but I can uh, I can look and see if I got one in the Wild Series section of the Discord. Um, I know I so let me all right. Uh, okay, so first round matchups was um, I think Bread Likely versus Wild THL Fanatics. We had F two L Celadon versus F two L Viridian, XD versus Wokage and Sunken Shakers, or XD versus APM and Sunken Shakers versus Wokage. Um, and uh, Shakers, F12 Viridian, Zarello's Disciples, and Bread Likely moved on to the next round. And then um, Bread Likely took down uh, Zarello's Disciples, and F12 Viridian took down Shakers uh, for our final match, which we have right here. Um, so, you no, know, we have uh, our champions. We have Bread Likely joining us for this episode. We have, I believe, all the players besides Nice Jewish Owl, who is currently at 1 a.m. time for him. So, um, you know, I will, I guess I can go through and uh, introduce our players. We have our captain, always just in time. <clears throat> hey, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing pretty well. Um, and then we have uh, Agent PWE, who... Sat most of the season up in the one and two seed. Yo. We have um, All Star, who. Uh, yeah, we have Molstar joining us, and then we also yeah. have Super Chicken, so I'll, I'll let both of you uh, uh, say hello at the same time because I lost my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing, Super Chicken? Uh, I'm doing great. Feels good to win in the five seed. <laughs> for sure yeah do you want to just um i mean just give us a basic rundown of uh how the you know playoffs were for y'all you were you know pretty much at the top of brown conference for almost the entire season basically so it was pretty you know pretty much guaranteed to make playoffs um so i'm just curious you know was there a big transition did you have to you know switch back into gear, I guess, as you got into playoffs to put more effort in. So what's the bread likely uh, planning process uh, week by week? Yeah, I think, like, the effort levels throughout the season started off quite high. Like, I think a lot of us were really grinding the game at the start to try to, like, get up to speed on, like, the wild meta and stuff. And Milo, Milo was, like, super helpful with that because he was, like, our kind of resident wild expert because he was the only one who had played um who like played wild consistently before the season started um so we were you know kind of like going to him for like uh what what's good right now and like what what works in like a conquest lineup um yeah, like, this season I, I thought druid was bad against aggro like fan druid and then and then, <laughs> and then oh my gosh it kept high rolling by drawing broken summons and spreading plague and armor gain and, and then and then that was like wait no that's the point of the deck Ah, okay. <laughs> Ithrin Druid's such a 
weird deck. It just kind of came out of nowhere a while ago, but yeah, yeah, I definitely, yeah, yeah. We got we like. I think once we realized that we were like guaranteed in playoffs, we coasted like we maybe like coasted a bit in like the last couple of weeks of the regular season, and then once playoffs started, uh, got really really sweaty, um, and like yeah. Mm-hmm. Pre- Prepped quite hard for for all the matches. Practice we we're practicing a ton. Um, yeah, turns out playing. Uh, okay, I'll give it. To, I'll give it to you. Wild players playing two different formats is a little difficult. Yeah, semis was definitely the most difficult with the Masters Tour coinciding during the oh, week. Yeah, so a lot less. Yeah, I, I actually wouldn't know than normal. <laughs> you true. You would not know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I guess on that note, while that's mentioned, um, we have up on the screen the the matches that got played. Um, so I I believe the order of matches was uh, Nice Jewish Owl with a three to two win over Marty B to start, uh, and then I believe Molsar got a three zero sweep over Neji. Or, no, I think it was the other way. It was yeah. okay. So Chicken got a three one win over Rotted Zombie. Yes, and, and then Molsar finished. And then Molsar got a sweep over Neji. Uh, which ended the match in three games. Or, yeah, ended the, the, the match in, in three individual matches, which is a big feat. Like, that that's difficult to do. We've seen it only twice this... The fact that we've even seen it twice this season is incredible. The fact that Pro ended in three, and that Wild ended... And NA Pro and then Wild ended in, in three matches is incredible, um, for sure. So, you know, congratulations... Um. Yeah, I, I I think I did see that there's at least one player on the team who didn't have to play a match in playoffs this season. <laughs> Let's uh, go. Yeah, team carry right here for sure. Um, so I guess I can let the players who did play kind of talk about their matches. Um, and we'll get into the actual interview questions that I have. Uh, that yeah. that the our hosts all have, I should say. But playoffs was whack because we just like didn't always play because just I don't know good yeah. good play slash good variants came up. Milo went three zero, Dylan went two zero, and Derek went two zero, and then in the semis he played after the mm-hmm. match was decided and won that too. So he was yeah. actually three zero. Oh wow! I went one zero and but played one after the match was decided, lost that, so 1-1 one, one actually, and mm-hmm. based went 1-0, mm-hmm. and then Kiwi went 0-0, zero and zero, but we just 3 0 every round, so <laughs> thanks for playing, Kiwi. <laughs> no problem, I enjoyed it. Yeah, that, that's actually quite a really good, that's, that's actually quite a dominant playoff run, honestly. Um, it's not often you see a team get win in three, uh for multiple rounds usually sometimes it happens once but it generally doesn't happen more than once so that that's that's a really good that's a really big feat honestly um so yeah i I guess i've done enough talking for now i will turn it over to to diamond and hyperin to to start uh with questions sure let's just get right into all right peewee which of your two THL titles mean more to you? The BG's title or the Wild title where you didn't ha- play a single game in playoffs? Uh, well, I think it's obvious that I'm not a standard player since I'm incapable of winning a title in any standard series. True, but, true. But the, uh, the Battlegrounds title, I think we p- took us like three seasons to, to win that. And but the wild title, I literally just came in, took it, didn't lose, didn't play. It was actually like two or three, so it's kind of lost its meaning for me. So I'll definitely, definitely pick battlegrounds. Super, super uh, meaningful and and definitely defines me as a player for sure. <laughs> So does I that mean does you'll be coming? You still have something to prove. Does that mean you'll be coming back to wild series next season? Not at all, no. I will not be returning in any capacity. Hopefully. <laughs> not forever? Never ever. Difficult. Stay, you gotta get, stay on top. Cash what out. What if you really want to win crossover one season? 
Okay, that's mm. true. No, no, no. <laughs> no. I mean, he can do that. He can true. do that. He can do that. That's true. <clears throat> if no, if no, I no. if crossover <laughs> is looking close and I need a couple more wins, I might sub in for a while, like a week. Or two. <laughs> Sounds point, good. Actually. Pull pull yeah, the di- pull the diamond. Right. Exactly. Sub, exactly. sub in for a while, get a win, and then <laughs> compete for crossover till the end of the season because you because you smurf because you smurf every other too. season. Series. It, it's crossover. <laughs> you just need a sub in. The result doesn't matter. That's true. Okay. I've Let's seen losses under- also increase your, uh, your crossover standings. So. Go undefeated in every other series. Seven wild, lose once, win crossover. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Oh gosh. Easy. I already did that once, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, next question then. Um, this one's to uh, the the entire team. Um, now that you've all had um, more experience playing in uh, in wild, are there any um? Any specific cards or decks in Wild that you'd um, like to see make a return to standard? You know, we have the, you know, core set's been around for over a year now, so. Um, oh, oh can I take this one first? Go ahead. Okay. Oh my God, Tog Druid is so much fun. I was uh, like, you're not saying Big Shaman. I thought you were gonna go with Big Shaman. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love I love the losses I got on Big Shaman. What an awful deck. I'm so glad that deck got nuked. Anyway, but yeah, Tog Druid is like the most fun I've had playing a Hearthstone deck in like. A long time to be honest it's like it feels like standard alignment druid but like like i don't know on on like steroids or something it's just i don't know the pop-off turns are super fast um it feels like you have like tons of agency in your in in most of your games i don't know i just had a, a ton of fun with it i hadn't played it until the week of finals and i was like sitting at like I don't know, silver or something with like a, like I started the season with like a four star bonus. Um, so I basically got to legend with like, I ended up grinding to legend with like a no star bonus because I just kept spamming Tog Druid. Um, because I was just having so much fun with the deck. Uh, and yeah, it just, it was really great. And I hope, I don't know, I hope like something like that makes a return to standard, like an alignment druid that's a little more combo oriented. That's funny. I like that deck, but for the opposite reason. I did indeed bait multiple members on the team into bringing other druid. Uh, but yeah, that was probably <laughs> oh, yeah, my favorite I was baited. deck. <laughs> uh, but I, I liked it because it, <laughs> unlike other versions of druid, it wasn't pure combo. You could win on tempo sometimes, too. Uh, that's kind of just like standard line of druid, too. Uh, I don't know. I thought Boom Pistol Bully was cool. Uh, it'd be nice as a card deck for standard. I don't think it would be as impactful because there's not as many battle cries. Uh, but oh, I I, I uh, had a although Al cannot be here today. He challenged me to a friendly battle today, and he did it in wild. And I did not have any wild decks built, <laughs> so I queued up the standard deck I had built. And I am now two and zero over the past week in playing standard decks against wild players. <laughs> the pillager rogue did not kill the wig priest on turn four, and then it died turn five. <laughs> yeah, so, that in, that uh, indeed. I mean, they, they that indeed bring is. All of pillager rogue to that standard, is and it'd be fine. Like the deck's absolutely awful against standard decks. <laughs> pillager rogue, level. Yeah, that's a difficult deck. <laughs> but. Let's see. Mm. This one uh, is from our our friend Dankus' dad. He asks, "Is a waffle actually bread or not?" I don't know what the definition of bread is. Yes, yeah, so our team server I, I required, it, mandated, enforced as the the supreme leader that I am, uh, but quite but quite benevolent supreme leader at that. I enforced that everyone must have a unique type of bread role, a uh, mm-hmm. cosmetic role, mm-hmm. uh, and for that, to, as inspiration, we referred frequently to the Wikipedia has a list of breads mm-hmm. and it has many things that you would not consider bread on there. One of them being a waffle. So I don't know. Uh, Wikipedia oh, yeah. says it's a bread, so. Nails is the waffle, so non egg waffle. It has to be yeah, non egg okay. waffle. So it's, so it, it has to be bread. Uh, but yeah, it also lists things such as bagels yeah. as bread. Yes. Uh, it lists crackers as bread. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Know, a few other things like that. Yeah. 
Do you like some lasagna? Well, that is not the bread, but... No, that is a noodle. <laughs> <laughs> we do like lasagna, though. Alright, well, our um, next question here. Um, do the tools that you uh, typically use to, uh, to you know play in uh, Fluke Succeed and uh, Standard translate well to to wild um and uh how did you deal with the um you know compared to standard huge lack of you know consistent data that uh the format has i could talk or dylan or p we haven't talked well, a bit you guys want I, to talk uh, about it yeah yeah i'd like to so funny story i mean the the data that we have mostly was from like the tempo storm Meta reports. Um, so the first, yeah, the data. Yes, data. Very accurate and good data, along with analysis. So I was gonna bring the Copper Hunter for like the first time, like I don't know, like ten weeks in, but I needed to like see what the deck is supposed to do oh. and get a list. And I looked on Tempo Storm. And I read their their thing, and they were talking about how you frequently com rely on scavenging hyena and. Hundra Rhino combo to kill the opponent. And then I went and I looked at their linked deck list and it did not run a scavenging hyena in it. And I'm uh. like, well, how am I supposed to play this deck without and combo them with scavenging hyena if I don't run scavenging hyena? And then uh, the, best one the, current, and, and, the best one is the current Tempo Storm med report has Freed Shaman as the, the top deck, whoever top I, tier oh, one. Oh, yes. Oh, you, yeah. You expand the matchups tab for it, and it has no favorables. Yeah, <laughs> it has only awesome. even and unfavored according to Tempo Storm. Tempo Storm. <laughs> Which, I mean, so, like, it's fine. Like, it's certainly a good deck, and it certainly doesn't have any matchups that I was gonna, dominates. I was going to say, I think the reasoning for that is just probably because it doesn't have super polarized matchups would be yeah, what, yeah. what what it's, they would what they would have a, but... a series of 40s 45s and 50s yeah <laughs> like it's clearly just one half not talking to the other half the the uh, lack of, of going back and, and looking at these things yeah uh, i mean also this was this probably came out what this came out by fifth so i don't know how much data we actually had in the new patch like they just haven't come out with anything new so far i don't know we'll see with the next, uh, the next patch, with the next report would bring for that. But regardless, um, Dylan, I'm curious here. You talk about because yeah. you don't even use data much in standard. Yeah, right? that's true. He's a vibe. Um, yeah, I mean, usually I would uh, like play in ladder to like see what I want to do in like a mm -hmm. in a lineup. But I guess in in wild in the beginning, all I did was take decks i knew that were similar to decks in standard and then uh just like play like just take those decks but like after that i just basically ha had a lot of prep with like scrims and stuff with like uh the team here and then i guess like from there it, it was just all prep from scrims because i i only went from like bronze 10 to like bronze 8 ever in wild ladder um but like Stats wise, I feel like um, there's there's so many decks that like you can't get like uh, very accurate stats, and and it's just a low sample size, so like you can't yeah. even use that either. But uh, yeah, that's completely, yeah. That's completely Mole understandable. Mole simply smells yeah. out his grid decks. <laughs> yeah, I just I just do the decks that I like play. I remember when I first met you in like maybe spring or summer 2020, uh, like two years ago now, uh, and you ladder finished top 16 to qualify for a Masters Tour using like an absolute abomination of a Galakon priest list, running like yeah. double ooze, like, like it, it was ran like five cards <laughs> really different from the standard list. And, and, and when, I, when I got it, terrible. I won like every you game. Any aggregated statistics, but like you were just winning with it. It didn't matter. <laughs> yeah, because... Ladder is like a bunch of pocket metas that you just have to figure out by just playing through it. I feel like, and and if you're in like like top, like if we're there is like top sixteen legend. I remember seeing you on stream one time ago against like some streamer, and he was just like molding about <laughs> how many tech cards you're oh, yeah. running. <laughs> that is the the most special with 
especially with Mole Warrior and Owl Warrior, as I see in an upcoming question. So the next one, I guess this is more for Justin as the captain. So how did you choose the best standard players and in brackets and Milo for the team? So I had to, I saw this question in advance, so I had to go back and do some research. So this had been, I talked about doing this for maybe like a year. I think I had mentioned it to Pee Wee, had talked about it with Owl, and had talked about it with Twos. So like, yo, know, one time we're all going to get aligned, we're going to make, like, a wild team, we're going to do tons of scrims with each other to learn the format, sweat it up, and we're going to go win wild. But, like, it's going to take us being all buy-in and, like, actually try to win it one season. And then, not now. <laughs> and then, I think Kiwi asked me maybe, like, uh, four months ago, or eight months ago, like, oh, is it this next season? I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm too busy, not doing it. But then, finally, four months ago, like, okay, this is the season. So I messaged those three again. Uh, Twos was no longer interested, and then, like, Owl and Kiwi were like, maybes, but then I lied and told Chicken <laughs> that, oh, yo, these guys said they'd probably do it. Would you be interested? <laughs> and he's like, sure. And then I went back to them and told, yo, Chicken's in too, and then they're like, ah, fine. <laughs> So then we got four. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's because I, I, I used my subtle manipulation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would have done it like, as long as we had a solid team that was going to commit, but that is fine. <laughs> gentle emotional trauma. Uh, so then we had four, and then there's a process of getting a fifth. We asked a bunch of our friends, uh, and most of them were like either not interested or didn't have the collection. Uh, which is completely fair. Uh, and then finally, like, two people said they were decently interested of Shep and Mole, but Mole was more interested, and <laughs> so, hey, he got the last slot. Uh, but, yeah, de decent. Dabs, uh, Izzat, Pasco, uh, a few others are just like, oh, I would love to, but nah. <laughs> but, eh, they came out to a good group of five. Uh, even even the chicken eventually learned how to win in wild without without relying on DQs in the end. Yeah, I definitely took a while to like figure out what worked for me and stuff like that. I don't know. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I mean some... the, the DQ we like memed on you for it, but the DQs were actually like an inhibitance because the other four of us were like, or I think is someone talked about before was you of like we we pray, played pretty hard learning yeah. the format the first few weeks and then like and dropped off but because you just had two dq ones you didn't do that so mm -hmm. the four of us like had crested the learning curve a bit further than you and then we were like dropping off an interest so you didn't have people to scrim with to like uh, learn to get up to that point <laughs> yeah uh, that's, yeah now that's a good excuse that's completely but, understandable like that explanation like i when i saw i was like ooh, like i can i can understand like not not like prepping all that much and then like not getting to actually play your matches it, it like can definitely do that obviously yeah, like you, obviously you get the points but like he didn't get to play and then so you all were kind of yeah. coasting by the end and he's and and chicken my and jit can like you know partially was probably still getting like probably like end game acclimation because obviously you did extremely well in playoffs um to like, winning all your matches so but yeah, yeah, I mean, as soon as you you actually devoted time to it, and we had resources to help you learn, obviously, you're a smart enough guy to pick it up. Yeah. Well, I guess then, Chicken, you already talked about Togdrid, but for everyone else, any other decks that stood out that you enjoyed piloting this season? Yeah, Dylan, what was your favorite deck? Um, I guess Quest Mage. I but like back in the day, like you know when Disguised Toast still played Hearthstone, he played a lot of Quest Mage and I uh did a lot of that too, but it was um it was still the the time warp one, right? And like you'd play like Giants and and to, to like uh uh you just play the Giants and then you get the extra turn and then you just kill them. So, uh I mean, I just, I just liked uh, playing, like, I, before playing a lot of Control, I just played, like, uh, Mage stuff a lot, and, like, it, it was fun to, like, relive some of that, so if, if, if I were to, like, have it back in standard, then that would probably be, like, fun for me. 
back in my day you played Sorcerer's Apprentice, Sorcerer's Apprentice, Bolton Reflection, Kabbalist Tome, and prayed yeah, you got that cheap exactly spells. That, yeah. <laughs> you youngsters have it easy. <laughs> back in the good old days, <laughs> when when men were men, and quest mage can complete the quest was decided on whether you randomly got three or less cost spells or not. Uh, what about you, Justin? Was there any deck that jumped out to you this season? Yeah, I mean, I, the, the naked tog druid, as I called it, was like running very slim down win con was definitely my favorite. I thought Pillager was cool too. But, yeah. I mean, it was definitely a bit solitary, but hey, it's fun to play solitary. It's not fun to play against. Uh, there's one Pillager game. I think it was either first or second time I threw it. Uh, I brought it. <laughs> Before I didn't slip there. I threw against Jordan MGA. Uh, Oh, I like I, I don't think I have won the game anyways, but I had maybe twenty percent equity on the turn. I put it to zero, uh, and <laughs> it was a very weird turn because I had milled one pillager and had double potion in hand, uh, and it was going against the Cathundra that was on like eighty health, uh, and I had to go now because I was going to die to the the board of the five tens the next turn. So I had to both clear board, deal a bunch of damage face, and leave with enough stuff in hand to like kill the next turn with the right top decks. Uh, but was very limited on both mana, on hand space, and on void space, because the double potion. Uh, and in trying to analyze it afterwards, it took like <laughs> it took like two hours of analysis to figure out what the best line was that turn. There was just so much going on. Uh, so that was probably my, na my naivete with the deck. I could probably figure out it sooner, but it was just like completely unrealistic turn to find the right line within 75 seconds. There's so many constraints. So that was cool. Uh, yeah, and like and like many of the other decks, <laughs> I kind of just brought those to a decent amount more than I should have for their strength. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Pee -wee? I thought Wild Mind Rogue was funny, even though I was through with it pretty much every time I played. Just being able to like thirty to zero someone on like turn four or five, this was too funny. It was also very fun, very funny when my, uh, Big Shaman was a deck, and then I said, "I'm going to lose turn one to Big Shaman. Should I ban it?" And then we said no. And then turn one, I lost to Big Shaman, and, and I was not even mad. I was just laughing. Um, that was funny too. But yeah, most wild the overlap between good deck and wild deck and deck i own was pretty much non-existent so yeah it was it was mostly just mine rogue the rest of the decks i kind of just had to bring and not because i really enjoyed playing them or anything oh yeah beast hunter and pain lock were cool but i only kind of stumbled upon them the last week uh or like, because in the other semi-final, both teams had brought like kind of identical sets of lineups. Were like, yo, can we make something that beats these decks? Uh, and then we were like trying to scrim out a counter lineup, and then we we're like, wait, <laughs> this was me and Milo mostly. Wait, none of these supposed counters actually beat them. Okay, let's just bring them then. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, I've been like. Renathal and Pain Warlock is one of the most, I think, interesting, like, ideas. Like, it's just the fact that you can play Molten Giants at 20 health on its own. It's just yeah, yeah, so it's just nutty. Like, dynamic. And it's, like, deck... so weird as well to, to prep from, from a Conquest perspective, because the, the cards slash decks that do beat even lock versus 40 card Pain Lock versus 30 card Pain Lock are all very different. Uh... So, like, in the finals, uh, Derek's opponent brought, like, a decent anti-even lock lineup. But Derek brought 30-card <laughs> Zeth Glare Warlock and just <laughs> had a pretty easy time with it. Uh, like, felt, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, felt pretty favoring each of the supposed Warlock counters. So, like, okay, why, why am I rolling the dice on which of these big Warlock archetypes my opponent's going to bring? Let me just bring the good deck. Yeah, the only... Uh... Yeah, the only thing that was tough for the pain lock was the priest. I like, I, I remember testing that with uh, Dankus. That I think I went like I don't know, like two, two and eight or something against the priest. But then against the, against the, the other decks, it, it was pretty good. Um, yeah. No, I, I was talking with like the rotted zombie after the match, and he definitely felt like it was a counter lineup to the warlock. 
but uh, in my own practice, it was certainly not. Yeah, you just draw enough of a deck to consistently have near or low with Ev on 6 slash 7, and then Zeph to pop a uh, block on 8, and that's like exactly how the matchup played out <laughs> in the <Yeah>. actual game. <laughs> All right, we've got time for only a couple more questions. This has been a fantastic interview. Um, so I have some questions from other people who DM'd me. Uh, I have one from our friend Turtle. He asked, with so many cards in the wild format, how do you possibly play around them all? Yo, I mean, that's the best part of that. There's so many that all wild discover pools suck. There's no crazy <laughs> buying wild. Yeah. You don't have to. You only have to play around 30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're yeah, you're, you're absolutely you correct. You play around the cards you see. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, really, it's just like, besides maybe like, oh, what did this, maybe like a quest mage evocation and, and then plays Finley. You're like, oh, okay, whatever they put in the deck, it's fine, because it's at the bottom of the deck anyways. That deck's never going to play that crap. <laughs> For sure. Um, and then I have one from CMAC. And gosh, this is a very long question. I have to read this off of a notepad. Um, a customer enters a supermarket. The probability that the customer buys bread is, is 60%. The probability that the customer buys milk is 50%. And the probability that the customer buys both bread and milk is 30%. What is the probability that the customer will buy either bread or milk or both? I have no clue. I have no clue. I just read this out. <laughs> you need a copy paste that. Yeah, I, 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 I will. I will. I think it's. I think it's eighty. I think it's eighty. Me. If you just do, I'll, I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I did not follow the numbers. If I, I got if you. this had been like while I'd been taking, I like. I mean, there you go. I I, I posted was, it in while chat. I'd been taking a statistics course. I could have done this, but that was <laughs> not recently. Actually, yeah, Dankestad said the answer is likely. True. Uh, yeah, I think Dankestad is correct. With bread and milk. Like, don't you just add up the the sixty percent and the fifty percent, and then subtract the the probability of getting both of them? That sounds right. Maybe. Uh. uh we need we need to see no. that to confirm. Uh, it's not because both is part of the the probability. Like both is also a, an acceptable outcome. No, because if you, you add them together, you're adding twice. So we're saying we're saying it's eighty percent. I don't know. C Mac didn't give me the answer. He just gave me the question. <laughs> what this sounds like is a new wild copy pasta. Yeah, yeah this really does. I mean, no, this literally bread. does. This literally does just look like thirty copy only pasta. Bread, yeah, guys, Standard only players are so dumb. I, I think it, so it dumb. is. It is. Uh, I think it is eighty because yeah, you subtract yeah, the thirty from the sixteen fifty, so it's gotcha. Yeah. Twenty. Plus the the numbers each a Venn diagram too. So the numbers okay. he chose makes it so that the probabilities are independent. It's Oh, yeah. 0.5 equals 0.3, which is a little weird. Yeah. You have to assume they're independent, otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah, if they're yeah. Really dependent, it you get a different outcome. Uh, do we know? know. This is why CMEC is the worst. No, but we, we know. <laughs> <laughs> no, CMEC. Okay, so CMEC, tell us whether we passed the class. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us whether we're gonna have to take uh, Calc 101 for business <laughs> another I, semester. <laughs> oh God, I, I'm done with college. I don't want to take any more classes. Uh, yeah, I guess like one of the final wrap up ones. I found words. So, mm -hmm. seeing as you guys have all played Pro Series as well, which is the other open listing, how did Wild compare to that? Besides like being a different format, like I guess with prep and stuff like that. Definitely. Uh, wild compared to pro? Yeah. I've not played pro much. I don't know. What do you think, Pee Wee? Or Derek? Hold the up. difference what between wild and pro? Yeah, that's right, because I think, yeah, Justin hasn't played that uh, many seasons. 
We lose. I lose in pro, but I win in wild or don't play in wild. <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference I had noticed this season. Mm-hmm. Um, felt like I don't know. It definitely felt like the prep, for, at least uh, for wild, was similar to the pro season. This expansion, at least, where the good decks were like really good. So they were kind of hard to counter. Um, so it felt like a lot of the... It honestly felt like there wasn't like that much to do in terms of prep. Um, <laughs> once like we figured things out. Because it, it did feel like... I don't know. It felt like, you know, Quest Mage, like Tog Druid, um, Pirate Rogue. I don't know, like maybe even their Pain Lock were like... Or, or, and, and oh, and, Sh- and Shaman as well a bit. It felt like they were those like four, like five ish decks were kind of like a good bit above the rest of the decks in the meta. I mean, there's like Copper Hunter, but that's like that's also like that's quite difficult. Um, and even still, like I think I don't know. I know I know a lot of people said like that was like the best deck in the meta played optimally. Um, I I can't really speak to that because I never played it, but it did feel like it was tough to get an edge on your opponent in terms of preparation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised. Um, I associate Wild with a lot of, like, 80-20s, but kind of this meta, there didn't seem to be all that many, uh, with some exceptions, but just <laughs> bringing the good decks. <laughs> There's a reason why like, people were not trying to go for wacky counter strats against them, because they kind of just didn't have many matchups worse than 40 or 35. Uh Wild. I also like playing like the tech cards that they have, like Dirty Rat and Nereem and Reveler and Boom Pistol Bully, because they don't have a lot of that in standard. So you can have like more interaction oh. between like combos and stuff like that in standard. Yeah, add more is really well, standard. I, I really dislike the meta for Wild for like the majority of it, but I felt like the last two weeks of playoffs was actually kind of cool once and the, the very last patch uh, with some of these decks that it's just like, oh. And just bring them and don't have to worry about getting countered. <laughs> and, then, and then I can play. <laughs> and game goes back and forth or whatever. Yeah. It was also cool that you could ban Rogue. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, banning Rogue is, is definitely a good thing. I d- definitely felt like part of the season was you either. It felt like for a large majority, like you had the option. You were either like planning to ban Pyro Rogue or you were going to try and like stop it essentially. Or yeah. plan on targeting something else, not even caring about it. But when you um, played uh, Bread, <laughs> what did you ban of his? I did not ban his Pirate Rogue because. Why not? <laughs> my, <laughs> no, because my lineup was supposed to No, my lineup, was, my lineup was supposed to be decent into it essentially the trust only me, trust me he is so bad at every other deck you're meant to ban the rogue <laughs> i didn't know that though i had no intel yeah, but yeah i guess asymmetry of information like the, it, yeah it's like yeah i just didn't i literally i literally did not know that that was his only good deck um <laughs> he was thinking but... of subbing in for semis uh, and then but then like didn't have enough time to prep for it and uh, <laughs> was just like playing some of these decks and oh gotcha. my he was really bad at tapping every turn on even oh uh, yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> happens to the best of them <laughs> yeah uh, that and i also didn't know i also was bad at minion in your fire priest like i'm sure that y'all had a, had a laugh at how bit. y'all probably had a good laugh at how bad i was at it but um no we laughed at him way more <laughs> but uh yeah i mean thanks uh, i like you know we're gonna go ahead and wrap up here uh, thank you, everybody, for oh, yeah, coming wait. on the show. Before we wrap up, oh, of course. One, Jacob was unable to make it bread, but he, he had a special message for the chat. He, he said, what a run, what a team, wild is easy. Follow me on Twitter at BreadLikely. <laughs> <laughs> were there any raffle emojis? Wise there? words. Uh, no, there are no raffle emojis. Uh, it can't be bread. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be fake. <laughs> I guess, yeah, like, with going with each player, like, mole. Any final words? No, I guess it was, it was fun. But I I think not a lot of us are going to come back, but it was still fun anyways. All right. Pee-wee? Bread likely. <laughs> nice.
Yeah, this was always going to be a one-season thing. I think I emailed Mako, like, halfway through the regular season. <laughs> and since the, the request came out, they're like, no, we're not coming back. I'm just happy to have spent it with a group as good as this. And, hey, yeah. well, we went on a hot, on a hot streak. <laughs> our, our Rune of the Arc Mage cast hot streak, hot streak, hot streak, hot streak. <laughs> nice. And then we played our amulet for free. And then and then we, we swept playoffs and won. Yeah. Uh, so. A, a good a good one season to have. Could not definitely. Ask any better. Definitely a season to remember with how it started and how it ended. Yeah. You definitely proved my my preseason rankings incorrect, and I'm more than more than happy to be wrong about that. So, um, again, uh, just congratulations and everything. Um, and. You know, I hope you all had fun playing this season, um, and and I guess we're gonna go to the main screen here. We're gonna call it. Oh, yeah, I gonna, forgot about oh. the preseason predictions. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, uh, I I put I put them. I have to scroll all the way down for seven. tier three fringe playoffs to see <laughs> number seven, Red Likely. Yeah, <laughs> I. Well, it's, you know... But I'm, to be I'm, fair, you said that perhaps underrating this team is always tough to judge how players will adapt and perform. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, true. Like, There's no history for us. I was, I was, gonna, I was going to do a mid-season write-up, but I got busy. Uh, that would have ranked you all a lot more favorably than that, because y'all were absolutely destroying. So, you know, proved me wrong easily. And, um... You know, this is a, a fun. This was a fun way to wrap up another season of Wild Series, and um, looking forward to seeing what next season brings. Um, and looking to forward to see what you all do in your in your series. Um, obviously, since I, I doubt, I, I think of all your team, I think Owl might be the only player returning to Wild. Um, you know, uh, going to be interesting to see how you all do uh, as successful players as you all are in other series so we will um look forward to it but thank you hyperin for being um around all season as our host um and i want to thank nhl who's not here for all of his great prep work all season um grabbing the screenshots and getting everything set up for me to kind of just make my job easy i appreciate you a lot friend um diamond thank you for coming in and uh doing this interview with me and Hyperin, it was a blast. And we will see everyone next season for another... We'll hopefully see everyone next season for Wild and Out for Season 7. Have a great night, everybody. Yeah, it's been, been a lot of fun. So have a, have a great night.